was just a few days ago that this car was released. The hype around the event, the exhibition here today is just insane. Welcome to Cars in Korea. I introduce newly released Genesis Hyundai and Kia cars. And as you saw from the thumbnail today, there are 10 points about this 2025 Hyundai Ioniq 5 facelift or product enhancement to be precise. That will make you believe it's worthwhile for you to switch over from your current EV to this 2025 Hyundai Ioniq 5 PE. Let me tell you all about it. I'm here today at 2024 EV Trend. It's one of the largest exhibition here in Korea that focuses on the batteries, the EVs, the charging facility, the list just goes on and on. And also in today's exhibition here today, there has been a lot of batteries and techs introduced by Korean companies. That was made for the first time ever in the world. Of course, the question still remains when it actually does reach the ultimate final production, but at least it's really promising that these companies are pumping out the latest techs. And as you can see from my background here today, the hype around the event, the exhibition here today is just insane. I'm here at the Hyundai booth and there is this Kona Electric N line. And I also have a review on this car as well. Feel free to check it out on my channel. Let's get back to Ionic PE and tell you all those 10 points right now. Let's go. First and foremost is the front design. The look has been changed. If you are the current model owner, you guys probably know, but most importantly, I'm not just focusing on the look. It's actually this active air flap. It sits really flush as you can see, and it will open inwards just like it did before. When it's closed, it looks super flush. Hyundai did not specify if there has been any upgraded in terms of the coefficient of drag. When it comes to anything flush designed to EV, it's better in terms of the CE as well as NVH, noise vibration and harshness. Do not be mistaken, this is not my second point, but this vertical lines now has been changed with the double lines from single line. And I know the US and many other countries did not get this digital side mirror as an option, but this is so-called the second version or generation DSM digital side mirror that is first introduced on this model. And biggest difference here is that when it's actually folded, folds as much as a conventional side mirror, whereas the first generation didn't fold all that much, so it was sticking out just as much. It eats up less space now with the second version. When you actually fold the digital side mirror, you see my hand right there? <laughs> so when you fold the DSM now, it sticks out far less than it used to. Another cute thing I like about the DSM is, light it up, you're going to see five pixels right here. Instead of big Hyundai logo they put on the first one, there is now Ionic 5 written. And the third point is the pixelated lights on the steering wheel that will show you the charging status and also will interact with you when you actually activate the voice recognition system. It is very direct and intuitive as to showing and telling you that the car is listening to you. And moving on to the next point, hang in there, I'll be flying through these things. The Universal Island now gets all the physical buttons that are frequently used. The ventilated seats, heated seats, heated steering wheel, the parking buttons, alarms, and the same thing for the passenger. It's now all physical. But the good old Universal Island, it stays the same. So you can slide back and forth the seat, no problem. Super roomy inside out, just a brilliant, brilliant job. FYI, the drawer type glove box now has been changed to a conventional drop down glove box. As you can see, now there is a cut out right here on the second row seat. So it's going to make less of the rattling noise on the second row seat, the seatbelt clip, which it used to on the preface lift model. This is another nitty gritty thing that I pointed out. See, there is a cutout just like so. This is the closer look of the cutout that I told you about. The second seatbelt clip is not going to bother you no more. Look at that. Open up the trunk. Come check this out. There is now the button right here that you can power fold the second row seat just like so. 
where before you actually had to come down all the way and use this lever to fold the seat, right? Of course you can fold the seat using this lever too, but now you can get it from the trunk as I just showed you. I should probably have said this to be the number one, but finally we get the rear wiper on an Ionic 5 PE model. Finally, yes, I am seeing it with my bare eyes. And some people pointed out that it would have been better if the rear wiper was actually put underneath the spoiler but as you can see there is the whole digital cameras with the built-in cam 2.0 and the room for the rear wiper to go in is really small as you can see this is about the thickness of the rear wiper so if this were to be included somewhere here it will still hang around right there i would say as we know ionic 5n got the rear wiper here already so it was probably inevitable for this Ionic 5 PE to get the rear wiper where it is right now. And number eight on the list is this charging port. Check it out. Well, I'll give you a few seconds for you to guess what the difference or the upgrade is. Quite a substantial upgrade. There is now a clip hole the lower clip out, lower cover out just like so. It wasn't like that before and some people actually ended up, when they were taking off the cover, they ended up breaking the cable here, but you don't have to worry about that anymore. So just like that, it's so much easier for you to plug and unplug the cover now, just like so. And it's all automated. Just like with the DSM, there are five pixels on this point, Ionic 5. Love that touch. The system is up. This is the CCNC connected car navigation cockpit that has been applied on all of the latest EVs. And you can see that it's now got the black bezel around the monitor, finally. Look at that. So all that white bezel is now gone and the monitors are 12.3 inch dual monitors, one on the left and one on the right. And let me switch that into, all right, so change the language into English, three split display. It's actually really practical. You can of course set whichever the mode you want. Power must be on can i turn it on so now it has the dsm digital side mirror you can turn it on and off sorry i am flying through everywhere but it is just how it is so now the battery is on it's currently 100 percent charged showing you the nearby charging stations and also all this information you can pull off straight from the car very intuitive and direct as you can see all these icons and buttons all self-explanatory and the best part is you can actually press hold look at that and change it switch it around and you can set your frequently used or your icons you can rearrange all these icons to whichever the taste you need you can control the seats of the second and third row seats just like that oh wow so push the seat back pull the seat forward and you can do the same for this side as well so i mean it's no surprise of course but it is just so so practical it is super handy just like that check that out oh wow so very direct and intuitive these buttons here now can slide the passenger seat on the front not the rear seats anymore so that is one of the biggest complaints that people had well, some people actually did find that useful and helpful, changing the rear seats. Activate the relaxation seat that I just did, as well as sliding and tilting the seat forward and back, just like so. Make a good use of that feature, especially when your car comes with the vision roof. This is like the best feature hands down. I love that. And these are the presets. Oh, okay, so all the seats are moving right now. So these are the preset modes and you can just change it to the safe sitting positions, easily switch around the profile. I showed you covered all about this on previous video. So please, please feel free to check it out and next point along with the universal island is this wireless charging pad that has been moved relocated to this position right here and it's very easy to place and use and you can see it's really practical you can easily grab your smartphone from here and pull it up and use it and let me show it to you right now right there just like that just literally throw it in and it's going to detect the phone and it shows you the charging status it's not the battery status 
that is, it is just an animation showing that the phone is currently just being charged. Keep that in mind. So let me show you how fast it recognizes the phone again, just like so. See, just anywhere within the pad, a charging pad. I almost put it at the corner this time, but it just recognizes the phone. No problem, charges up the phone just like that. And you can now also watch the Netflix and YouTube so forth. Right now, the Netflix is not available on the Hyundai cars just yet, but Genesis just got it. So it is only a matter of time that Hyundai CC and C also gets the Netflix. You can watch YouTube and all these are actually the Korean version Netflix OTT services. So this is the conventional mirror versus the digital center mirror. And do not forget about that vision roof. The wheelbase remained the same, so refer to this dimensions right here. Feel free to pause the video and check it out for yourself. All of this um, detail I have included in my description below, so feel free to check it out. And that is the spec for the motors, the batteries. So that's it. 10 points that will make you reconsider upgrading your EV or your ICE cars to this 2024 Hyundai Ioniq 5 PE model. If you still have questions about this Ioniq 5, facelift or PE. I keep on saying it, the PE model. Drop in the comment below. I'll try my best to answer your questions to best of my ability as I always have been doing. Once again, there is a full detailed review about the car on my channel, Inside Out. So feel free to check it out. Right next to Hyundai booth is the Gia booth. Well, let me show it to you since I have it right here. Gia Ray EV right there as you can see and i have a review on this car as well this is the micro car or k car in japanese term that is only sold here in korea at the moment and this car went full electric as well and this is one of the best car hands down when it comes to this micro cars even the passenger door here you see it opens up 90 degrees this car is actually running on the lfp batteries and it's really really fun and easy to drive around in cities. EV9 that won all the awards around the world as we know, right? There is a full detailed review about the car on my channel as well. Feel free to check it out. It's been months already since this car came out and I actually have seen this car a lot on the street, but it still looks surreal. It just is out of this world. It is very futuristic. Just an amazing car. Truly an amazing car this is. This is the one and only car in this segment as an EV, as we all know. At least Hyundai Motor Group cars, right? Beautiful, it just looks amazing. And it's got the sliding seats on the second row seat. So this is a six-seater EV9, just, just like so. And there are three cameras on the Ionic 5 N-Line, just like the regular one. 